Welcome back once again to the crossover with Joe R. Lucas. And after my last fascinating conversation with the retired referee Luigi LaMonica, I figured it was time to get back in the group of things and find me a player to interview. Not just any player, though. Guy that's got quite a story to tell behind him. A guard that's on his 14th team in 10 years, but looks like he might have just finally found a home. Player that every time I, it's, it's interesting, every time I hear someone talk about him, it's different. One person says he's a great pastor with tremendous court vision. Another article says he's a great defender. Then all of a sudden you see one that states he's a great scorer. And if you ask me, I'm just like, this Maccabi guard Brown, this guard Lorenzo Brown is just what I call an all around player. Lorenzo, my man, welcome to the crossover finally. How you doing, my man? I'm great, thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. Yeah, you know, people who listen to this, they don't know, it's, it's nine o'clock your time right now, 8 p.m. my time, mm -hmm. and, and, and we're still going at it. You said you're, you you feel like an old man too, but you know, me working at eight, <laughs> I usually don't get that. I don't usually have that pleasure. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I'm normally in the bed like around 11, so I, I got a few more hours in me. All right, well, we'll, we'll make sure to get you in the bed. Hey, man, my introduction, why is that? Why, why, have, why haven't I ever really seen an article that says he's just an all-around player that, that does everything? I've always seen articles like, man, he's a great scorer, he's a great shooter, he's a great passer, but I've never seen anything like just the all-around type of player. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I've never even uh, had a chance to sit down and think about that, but... I mean, it's just a compliment all itself. I guess I feel like somebody one day would just come to the conclusion and say he's a all around <laughs> player. So I'm just I'm just waiting on that uh conversation to pop up. So that that Swiss Army knife thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But what in your mind, based on that, what I just said and what we just talked about, what what do you think is the best part of your game is if you had to pick one thing and then, and what is like when you go to the gym and you go out and you play by yourself and you know kind of get your extra work in your extra time what's the one thing that you're trying to get better at right now uh so i mean i probably say back in my younger days i'll probably say i was working on my offense so probably more scoring and right. uh passing but uh now you know i'm getting a little older and you know i just feel like everything's more important you know everything to do everything is important for me so yeah i'm in just i'm in the gym just working on you know being the best teammate i can be um i, I feel like uh people don't seem to like to work on that as much mm -hmm. it's hard it's hard to go out and work on defense though you know <laughs> yeah i feel like i just defense i feel like it's just working hard in practice Exactly. That's, yeah. I mean, because you, you know, one, when you're out by yourself just shooting around, and you, yeah. you know, you, you can do a couple of shuffles, you can do that, but until you get into the real live action, there ain't no. Exactly. It, and it, every guy's got their, 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 their move to the left, their move to the right, their quick foot, whatever, their, you know, the their, their jab step. So every, every time you play so much, it's different to play Dion. Right, for sure. Yeah. Let, let's, let's get this started, man. You're from. I've lived in Charleston, South Carolina for about 10 years. You're from Atlanta, just right, right across the world. Although Atlanta's about two hours away. It takes about five, six hours to get there because of the highways. Right. But what was it like growing up in Atlanta? Oh, man. Um, so I, well, really, I was born in Rockford, Illinois, and I moved to Atlanta when I was uh, about six. So, um, uh, but I mean, that, that's growing up in Atlanta then. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah. So it was, you know, I was all over the place, man. I was just trying to mimic what I, what I see my older brothers and cousins doing. Um, I feel like all of us had that, you know, had that leader we looked up to and uh, mm -hmm. I had a few of them. So all of my, my brother and my older cousins all played basketball and, I was just the the young kid following following the footsteps, and I kind of became a habit to me. I couldn't I couldn't stop, you know. I was just well, everything I did was just basketball. Was that the only sport? I mean, most guys, most Americans play a little baseball, a little football, a little here and there. But was, yeah, was, yeah, was basketball. I, it. I try I try football for like uh, maybe when I was like eight. And I got hit one time, and I was just like, "No, nah, this is <laughs> <laughs> this is not for me." So I just I quit and. You know, kept it basketball. 
Man, man, I went I went to my senior year of high school without playing football, and my, my football coach was my basketball coach. He's like, man, look at – he's like, you're too soft for this game. You need to come out and play football, <laughs> learn how to hit, get hit. Right. And I did the same. It took about three games, man. I got hit one time in the back, and my arms started, like, tingling and yeah, shaking. Yeah, I didn't know. I took that helmet off, took those solar pants off. I said, I'm going to sit on and watch this sport from now on. Exactly. Look, I, I, I'm better watching it than playing, I can tell you that much. <laughs> For sure. Exactly. <laughs> what, what about parents? Were, were your parents involved in the, in your, your basketball upbringing and career and family? I, obviously, your brother was your, your role model. Right, right. Yeah, so my mom played a big part in what I had going on. Um, and she pretty much just led me to it. Uh, she put the ball in my hand, and and then the story just goes from there. Um, I had a, a bunch of other, like, parent figures in my life uh, as far as from, mm-hmm. like, AAU and – in high school ball, right. so I had a, it was like, I'd probably say like five or six different other people who I call parents, you know, because right. they kind of operated me as I as I grew up and learned the game a lot through my career. So, I mean, it's just a bunch of love in my, in my, in my, in my circle. Were they, were they like uh, life parents, so to speak, mentor parents, basketball parents? Were, were they, did they take over like different phases of your life to kind of guide you the right way? Yes, for sure. So a basketball parent. So I still like some of my AAU teammates, like their parents were like team moms and team dads. So we were just right. go over to their houses every other weekend and, and stay the night. And, and it would just be it was like a whole family thing. And I'm still in contact with those people to this day. Nice. nice. I mean, it's, it's great, man, because, you know, when, you, when you're brought up in whatever situation you're brought up, there's, there's so many times that you can just go the wrong way. And, and it's, like, it's like a pinball machine. You know, people pushing you one way, people right. pushing you the other way. Right, right. You're trying to keep that straight line, man. It's, it's kind of cool when you look back on it and you're like, you didn't realize at the time what they were doing for you, but now you do and you still keep in touch with them. Man, it's so, it's, it's so appreciated, too, because, you know, you never know what your life could be like without good people around you. So, I mean, I just, I just have so much love for those people. I don't know what my life would have been like, but I know it wouldn't have been as good as it is now. I can tell you. <laughs> what, what, what did you need those people to keep you out of trouble? Were you in trouble? Were you like, were you a little bit of trouble when you were younger? Or? Uh, no, I mean, I wasn't a troublemaker, but I mean, that's how how I grew up. It was easily easily to get in trouble, you know. So, um, I mean, I feel like in most people in my situation, we grow up in. In low in low poverty low poverty neighborhoods, so right. I mean, most of the guys that were on my AAU team, they had they were in a better situation than I was. So I mean, I mm-hmm. would kind of I wouldn't say I would go ex- go over their house to escape, but it was kind of like an escape route for me to be there and right. s- stay or stay away from the trouble. So it was what, 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 were drugs an issue. No, not like, at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, I mean, I mean, the 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 opportunity to be there for for young kids playing basketball. Like I went through, all my friends were oh, okay. You know, they're yeah, all doing sure. drugs. Yeah, 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 for sure. It was it was definitely it was definitely around. But uh, right. uh, basketball was just my escape route, um, and it was it was definitely um, I sh- I could say it was it was more positive. It was more positive impact for me because I would always find a way to get to the gym, you know, mm-hmm. even if it resorted to walking. Yeah, I, w- I would get there in you know nick of time. So it was definitely uh, definitely a blessing, and I had good friends around me too that didn't veer me to those, I guess, right. situations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I I grew up in in same type of type of situation, and it's like it was always available, man. I, and I look back at it nowadays, like we were talking about those people, you know, my mom and dad were part of it, my sisters and, and some other coaches and stuff. But it's always like, man, it would have been so easy to go the other way. For sure. No, for <laughs> you sure. know, it's, it's and crazy. We, we, we also know guys who got caught up in that life that could have been, right. you know, big stars nowadays. So, I mean, like I say, it's just a blessing to be where I am today and, and just, uh, you know, you got you got yourself through that hard part. Went to high school and and, and you went to high school at, at Centennial, and then you went to in the military academy too, right? Yes, yeah. So um, How, what's the what's the military academy like? It, so, oh, it sounds man. awful, man. 
it, it, you know, so, <laughs> so I, I remember, the, I remember the first day I got there, it was, uh, it was called Hargrave Military Academy. And, um, uh -huh. my first day was an all boys school. So my first day there, my mom drops me off. And well, you, then, hey, hey, you, hey, you just, you just made it sound worse than I imagined it. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I'm telling you, everybody, I walk in and everybody's like screaming and they like cheering, but it's like a, it's like the whole school is just out there just clapping and yelling. You have to walk up. Right. I had like three backs, had to walk up like 180 steps. I remember that because I counted these steps. You know, it was 180 <laughs> steps to my room, you know, but, you know. That, that, that's every, was that every day? Every day. They had an elevator, but oh, it was man. broke. It was broken. So oh, we, we could broke never it. use it. <laughs> but it was, it was, it was a decent experience of uh, five in the morning, waking up, you hear the, you know the music playing. You have to be in uh, a formation, and you have to wear. Oh, yeah. So, so you like y'all had to do that. That was kind of like the Citadel in, in yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah. South Carolina. Yeah, it's like so you you woke up in the morning, and got into the formation, marched a little bit, marched to breakfast, marched to lunch and dinner. Like lights out at certain time. It was it was it was like that for sure. And what about practices? When when do y'all practice? Uh, we practice like after school, so we would have classes from like eight to maybe two or something like that, and then right. we would have practice maybe like four, five. But by actually, my coach uh, that was there, uh, Coach Keats, he's actually my he actually coaches at my college that I went to, North Carolina State, right now. So shout out to Coach okay. Keats, yeah, big big come up for him for sure. <laughs> That's good for him, man. That's, North Carolina State's a great program, man. For sure. Always has been. For sure. I'm 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 old enough to remember the, uh, the Jim Valvano days, man, yeah, when Jimmy they won. Jimmy V, Jimmy V, yeah, yeah, for sure. They still talk <clears> about he, that. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of the craziest things ever, man. Yeah. I don't. Have you ever seen? You ever seen that thirty on thirty? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of course, um, of course. Yeah, yeah. you have to. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. So how, how was North Carolina State? Were, were you recruited by other ACC teams also? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, but, I mean, those guys pretty much show more interest than any other school that was uh, looking at me at the time. Um, Coach Larry Harris and uh, Coach Sid Lowe were the coaches mm -hmm. at the time when I was – Sid, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, <laughs> great people, man. Great people. Yeah, man. He's so cool. Yeah, and they, they were – there was guys who recruited me the, the toughest and that pretty much just led to that. Um, I had friends that were already there, uh, Richard Howe. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I know uh, my good friend CJ Leslie and Ryan Hero were already committed there. So that played a part to me going to the school. Right. Well, you guys, you say you made two NCAA tournament appearances, 2012, 2013. Were, were, those, were they by... Going in off the bubble, were they coming in off of winning the tournament, the ACC tournament? How'd y'all get in? Um, so, yeah, after my freshman <clears throat> year there, we uh, changed coaches and we had uh, Coach Mark Godfrey. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he and that's when I actually started to play the point guard because I was I was recruited as a two guard my freshman year. And then I played two the whole the shooting guard the whole freshman year. And then Godfrey came and he said he wanted the ball in my hands. And it just everything just switched up like that for me, um, and I was I was good at it. <laughs> well, yeah. what, what did you What did you feel like you were though when you went there? I honestly didn't know. I was I would be back. I don't, and forth. You know what? Yeah. Hey, hey, so I don't think anybody still knows. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'm still kind of like figure. I'm like I'm like what is it? My point guard, or shooting guard. But I mean, I just love the pass. I love to get guys assist, and and it just right. it brought me joy to see my teammates just you know. Getting buckets, so I, I like that. About right, it. That's right. my favorite part of the game for sure. I mean, that, that's that's two people enjoying it. You're right. Instead of just one. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's how I always yeah. like that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, most definitely. But yeah, when Godfrey came, we uh we made the tournament. Um, we were a good team. I mean, we didn't we didn't win mm -hmm. the ACC tournament because be, just because they had a uh, UNC both years. Right. They had a uh, some dogs on their teams, man. So uh, we. Made it to the Sweet 16 my first, my my sophomore year, and we lost to Kansas. And they had a pretty good program there at the time. And then the next, the my junior year, we lost to Temple. I think they had Khalif White at the point guard that year. He was, mm. he was a killer. 
Yeah, y'all, y'all didn't like losing that game though. You could lose. Oh. You could take. You could take losing to Kansas, but losing to Temple. Oh was like, man, it was it was nasty. It was nasty. But you know, you gotta <laughs> roll with the punches, man. Right. Uh, I mean, it's all—it's all part of the game. Winning and losing is all part of it. Right, right. And, and, for sure. and, and, and once you get into dance, anything goes. It doesn't really matter after that. Right, and it's like it's one game elimination. I think uh, Euro Cup is doing that now, right? Yeah, they're doing something like that after the after the season. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit more a little more pressure based now. You know. You know, that's it's right like now. the Final Four. Exactly. I mean. If, uh, that that's why the final four is so big. A lot of people would say, you know, the final four is like not justified for the better team, but I think it's perfect. I, no, I, think, I agree. You know, you you got your you got your domestic league playoffs. Enjoy those playoffs. Come <laughs> come win come win two and be the champion. You know, that's exactly. how you should do it. And anything can happen. You never know. Yeah, you 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 for what your 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 senior season, right? Yeah, uh, yeah North Carolina I, State yeah. for the draft. Yeah, we. we uh, Whose advice? Your just what you wanted to do, agent advice, people's advice from around you, these people who who are helping you. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. Um, kind of just felt like I, I played my part, um, mm. and I just wanted I just wanted more out of the game. I wanted to see what the next life was like for this basketball my basketball career. And, and making that jump, I mean. A lot of people get nervous to make that jump to begin with. You know, in my day when I played, it was like you played your four years and whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? Right. We didn't. Of course, I wasn't good enough to, to forego any of my years anyways. But back then, it wasn't normal that, that you forego the time. So it's kind of like a process. And now you decide to skip that process a little bit in, in, in some people's minds, I guess, with me older guys like me. And are, are you nervous about making that move or, or you just you felt like you were ready? Yeah, I feel like I feel like I was ready uh, and a little bit of nervous as well. Um, but you know, I feel like I think I guess this is what they say. I, uh, they they say like you get older. I don't think the NBA likes older guys if for some reason. I don't know. That's what they were telling me. Like I was going on twenty three years old, I think, at the time, and I think right. they were like twenty four is like old joining the NBA or something <laughs> like that. So I'm like, oh. Am I going? I'm gonna be old, an old guy in the league already when I first joined. Join, so I just made the decision, um, and it's always been a dream of mine to get be in the NBA. So yeah. I mean, the process was was hectic. I think I had like maybe 16 or 17 workouts, and I had more. But really, I, yeah, I had more, but I ended up getting hurt. I like my I pulled a hamstring or something like that. So, thanks. but 16 16 workouts and how much time? Oh, I mean that's. Kind like of like a, within a month, almost. Yeah, no, isn't in it? a month. Yeah, in a month. For yeah, because sure. you got to get those things in like every other day. But a lot, of, and plus you're traveling from, exactly. from team to team. Exactly. That's the that's the tough part too, because it's just it's, it's like nonstop. It's like you're just right. going. Give, give a listener like an, an example of what a day in one of those one of those workouts would be like. How 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 many hours? Uh, uh so maybe like two, maybe max two. Mm-hmm. Two, two hours, but you you're in there with a few. I was in there with a few guys, so okay. It was it was it was just it was a good competition, you know. And you got to. But gotta you're not just it. you're not just playing though. You're not you're not just playing pickup, are you? You you get no. drilled also, right? No, yeah, yeah. So I don't it, I don't think it's more than maybe like six or seven guys in there. So you're not really playing full court. You maybe do like some three on three things or right. shooting drills and things like that. They just want to, they want to see what you can, you know, what you can do pretty much. Right. And man, that's, and how, I mean, when you're on your 13th one, for example, and you know, you still got three more to go, man, that, that you, this mentally and physically abusive almost, you know? Yes, for sure. And then you have <clears> some <throat> teams who run you like, I think maybe was it maybe Boston or Phoenix? They do like a maybe like a some type of sprint at the end, and but it's long. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, but it's a long. It's long. It's like three minutes or something like that. Oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So uh, you you got a few of those, and you want a next flight after that. Then you might go home for like a day. Then you're on. You know, it's just like I said, it's nonstop. But the experience and- was amazing. 
And if you're at that Boston one, you don't know there's that three minute sprints coming up at the end, do you? So you, you no, 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 given... you know, everybody knows. Oh, you, <laughs> everybody, oh, they knows. Knew everybody yeah, knew. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they, they tell you about it, like, like, oh yeah, you been to Boston one yet? Or you been to the Phoenix one? They do the little sprint <laughs> at the end. I'm just like, oh man, yeah, but uh, it's cool yeah. though. You, so you went to the Timberwolves, right? Number fifty two. Yes. And, uh, pick number fifty two, and and that the dream because now you go through this all quickly because there's so many ups and downs in, in, in the NBA for you from the G league to the NBA back and forth, 10 day contract. It's one thing I always talk about is like, cause I, I went, to, I made Sacramento my first year and, and yeah, I got cut on that cut date. And, and it was like, you know, it was the most depressing day of my life. I thought, cause I never really expected to make it to the NBA. Then I did. And then they got rid of me. Right. So it's like that, that, that dream you always had, you never, I always tell everybody, like, you never really dreamt about that part. That part never really creeped into your head. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, how was it for you to, you know, you, you got picked a little bit lower than I think you, you predicted you were going to be picked or people predicted you were going to be picked. And then you played some summer league ball and, and, and it just went back and forth for you. What was that like? What's that mentally and, and, and emotionally? What's that like? Uh, it was very frustrating, to tell you the truth, uh, because it's like you feel like you're supposed to be in in that position that you always thought you were, you know, an NBA mm -hmm. player, you know, just that's what everybody thought is what you thought, you know. So, you know, just going back and forth was just it was a headache because you never like I never had a, a chance to unpack my bag. My bags were always right. packed because I'm on the move. I'm on the go. So and I think I when I was in, I was, ended up signing a deal in Philly that year, my first mm -hmm. year. And I think I was the first. Well, one of the first ever two-way players, but it wasn't considered a two-way at the time. Well, you know that that was that's one of my questions I have written down here for because I read about it. I was like, "What is a two-way player? I've never mm -hmm. even heard of it." Right. But what does that mean? What, what does it mean? Uh, so a two-way player is a guy who's on he's on both teams. So I could be the, on the the G League the NBA team, team and, and the G League, the G League at the same team. time. Yes. Yeah, and and would you play one night with one, one night with the other, or or uh, I mean, because most of them are pretty are relatively close to each other, right? They're in the same city. Yes, uh, yeah. So when I when I had when I was on my two way with the Raptors, uh, I did both. I did like uh, if I'm not mistaken, I played a game one night and then the next night played in the NBA game. So really, yeah, yeah. So it, it's I mean it's it's fun. For a guy who's trying to make that situation happen for himself, but right. you know it's a tough game to play. Risky. Every, I mean, every opportunity too is is. I mean, you can't you can't say no to go play a game in the NBA. Exactly. But but how does that work compared to a ten day contract? Because I kind of I know what a ten day contract is, but being a two way player, you just you just contracted and paid by by the the NBA team. Yes. Who sends you out to play in the G League whenever they want to. Yeah, so I think it's like you get like half half and half maybe is how they mm -hmm. did with us when I was in the 905. We did like maybe half the games in the G League and half the games in the NBA. And it's, So that was a full season. It was a full season contract then. Mm -hmm. Two ways. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then the playoffs came and, you know, it, they work it out somehow. That's crazy. I've never. I, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Interesting <laughs> thing. Interesting. What's the uh, give Give my listeners an idea of what the G League is like. What What the schedules, games, trips, money, yeah. all oh, the important things. So yeah, um, <laughs> I think it got it's gotten a lot better from when I first started in the G League. Um, I think so when I first started the. They had like an A, B, and C contract, and I okay. think the the A was like twenty five thousand. The B was like maybe fifteen or something like that, and then the C was like ten, maybe. That was yeah. like that was the money, you know. That was the money you were going to make for the year. And I thought I thought you were going to go A twenty five, B forty, and no, C no, sixty. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I wish I wish it was like that, but but like I said, it, it's it's a real life grind. When I when we when I first when I started, we were playing in a we were practicing in a YMCA gym, 
You know, oh, man. and it, you were walking in the locker room, there's old guys walking around like naked. I'm just like, bro, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is what's going on in here. Like, this is how we gotta live our life. But it's it's a, it's fun though because it's like, you know, you're you're trying to you're trying to better your better your life. But you know, I, I didn't. Those those were some good days. I I can't I can't lie to you. But it was fun. I still have uh, I'm still connected with some of my teammates that I played with back then, and they're all doing better. So it's it's cool uh, to watch everybody progress. Right. Wait, wait. Was there a point where you were just like, damn man, this isn't worth it anymore, or uh, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Just going back and forth and starting to frustrate. Like you said, I'm 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 living out of a suitcase everywhere I go. Yeah. How old does that get after a while? Yeah. After a while, it gets older. After the first day, I'm not I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly, I when I I first came overseas, I went to Russia. It was actually Unix, um, uh, and I kind of I don't know why, but I, I felt I felt a physical or like it was something like. Inside, something going on inside my body, and then they, they kind of told me that like I would never play ball again. Like they were like, yeah, really? yeah, they were like, oh yeah, you might want to go back home and you know get checked out because you might never play ball again. I'm just like, I'm like, what? So I go home and I'm sitting there for like a month or two, and I'm just sitting. I'm just I'm depressed. I'm like, right. what I'm going, what am I going to do now? I'm, I think I was I was like. 25 maybe 26 mm -hmm. and i'm just i'm like i'm never played basketball again you know like this is yeah. this is what it's come to but um long story short it it wasn't what they were saying what they were saying it was um uh -huh. and i ended up getting another job in uh china for for two months right, right, right. and you know and it went on from there but you had the same thing happen to you in in Italy also. In Italy, you? yes, yes, yeah. But was that was that before Unix or was it, that yes? It was Unix? actually that was actually before Unix. And when I was in Italy, the, the Italian one. Yes, okay. I was. I was. It was the same situation. Yeah, uh, I went to Italy and they said the same thing. And I was, you know, I was ready for practice, but they said, "Oh, you can't practice." And we were in the mountains at this time, like we were in training camp. It was like, oh yeah, yeah. I I, was, I remember that. I remember that shit. <laughs> One of those situations, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, am I gonna sit here for this long in the mountains and and not play, ba not even play basketball? I'm just gonna sit here. So I ended up, right. going, I ended up going home, and and I went back to the G League, and you know. But but was the issue that you had the same thing? Yes, that, it was, that it they was told the same you? thing. Yeah, it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. And and nothing ever came of that. No. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, and that's I, and I kind of like I almost gave up on coming to Europe. I'm just like I don't, I don't never want to do this again because right. this is why What's I the, stayed in the G League for so long because of the situation at hand. Because of that situation, mm -hmm. yeah, that's crazy, man. Because it, you, no one ever heard of it, obviously, but you had never played here either, so right. there wouldn't be anything that was news to anybody. But right. But now you look back at it like, damn, you, you might have wasted a couple of years of your life because of because of you know whatever whatever was diagnosed. And I always say, I wish I would have started in Europe a little earlier. You but know? what what did you know? What did you, I, I love this question for Americans, man? Is what did you know about Europe before you like started thinking about coming over here? Nothing. I had <laughs> I, I didn't know anything. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know anything. <laughs> But you know, uh, I, I was all, I'm always down to for a new experience. But, uh, but but when you got when you got over, you started like you know your first experience in Europe was what was it like for you? It's, it's, it's adapting is not easy, not at by, all by any means. But I mean, I, I'm I'm assuming that if you've been in the G League for so long, it's it's a little bit better. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, to, to say the least. Yeah, G League, you're getting up in the morning at five a.m. to for flights and you have to connect for like probably like three connecting flights just to get to right. where you're trying to go and then you're in a a bum hotel so you just like look this is this is not it not what yeah not this, is, this is not it but you know it well, got, what was your i mean you played in a couple of g league all-star games you won mvp one year i mean it's not like you weren't balling out either you're playing right so but what was like for you? What was the best experience for that whole time? What was like the biggest learning learning lesson for you 
during all that, whether it's NBA, whether it's during the G League, whether it's a little bit of combination of both. I mean, you even played in the D League before it became the G League, right? Right, right, yeah. You like you like you like an guy, old yeah. you like an old vet, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a D League <laughs> guy for sure. Yeah, no, but yeah, the, I, I feel like the best learning experience is that it gets better. Mm-hmm. And about, if, about the work you put in, I mean, I didn't I didn't stop, even though I could have, it could have. Could have just shut down for me, but I, I just kept going. I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to see what it was like to be in the position I'm in now, and it worked out for the best. What was your best NBA experience? Best game, best moment, best. My best game was against the the Pistons. I think we scored like 13 or 14 points. I had like uh-huh. six assists when I was in a uh, Toronto, and it was. A game I had a G League game the night before, and we flew to Detroit uh, for the game, and I ended up playing. <laughs> what, what, which was a surprise. Like you never know when you're gonna play. So ended up. Isn't that playing. the crazy thing? Yeah, like it's just like okay, they like Lorenzo. I'm like, oh okay. I'm like, All right, let's do it. But that, hey, that that happened to me one time. I had to look underneath my sweats to make sure I had my shorts on. <laughs> right. Now, like, well, Michael Beasley, you, you know, you had, had yeah, your shorts yeah. on. <laughs> it was like eight games in a row. I hadn't played. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, Rook, get in. You yeah. know, I'm just like, I, they told me get in and cover Magic Johnson. Like, and use all use all six of your fouls. I was like, oh, no, don't do that. One, one of them moments. Yeah, that's, that's one terrible. of them. Yeah. <laughs> every that was one of those moments. Every hates that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Every hooper, but you got you know you just got to take it. You got to take it for what it is. That's all. Right. So, so when did you decide to say, okay, I'm going back to Europe. Screw this. I'm I'm done with this. I'm I'm going back to Europe. Uh, so it, it kind of um, happened after the MVP year, and I got in the G League. Um, so mm-hmm. I ended up getting the MVP, and then still no team wanted to sign me. Which it, it was weird. I didn't know what else I could have done better to, you know, right. up my situation. So Toronto ended up signing me uh, for the full year, the the next next year without the two way. Um, right. And I signed there, and then they released me in maybe like February, March, and uh, ended up going back to China the next month. And I finished out two months there, and I'm just like. I'm not doing another training camp. That was like the last yeah. draw for me. I don't because it's not it's not guaranteed for me that I make the team and I have to go into the G League again and try to figure it out. So right. I was like, I'll give uh, Europe another try. Man, your your your, your perseverance is, is to be to be a man <laughs> to just keep going and keep going yeah, and pushing sure. through. Man, it's 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 crazy. Yeah, sure. I was when I was. You know, I was reading up on you. I was just like, man, at one point or another, I'd have been like, forget this. Yeah, man, and I and I had those, I had those doubts in my head. Like, I just need to figure something else out. But you know, I love the game so much. I just want to, you know, show show what I can do. Right. So your first your first decent experience in in Europe in Europe is with a team that you probably still don't know how to say the name of it, right? You just say Red Star to get it over with, right? <laughs> right, Zeta. <laughs> Red Star, yeah. Loved it there, man. Loved hey, it Belgrade's, there. Belgrade is one of the best cities in the world, isn't it? Yeah, it's just amazing. I loved it there, man. Great people, a great atmosphere, good teammates. So, you know, couldn't couldn't have so, it either way. Man, what do, what do you think in that first the first game when you're in that red and white, man? You put that uniform, you come out like usually two hours beforehand. It's like all thirty thousand people in the stands going crazy. Right. What? I mean, you got to be looking up, going, "This is just unbelievable." It's, you, you never, at this point, you never played a game in Europe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what, I, I like I said, it was always about a word of mouth thing. It was somebody, everybody's like, "Oh, wait till the game starts. Wait till the fans." Get, you know, I'm so I'm just like, okay. You know, but I seen uh, I seen footage because I think yeah. uh, a guy named Quincy Miller played in Red Star probably like two mm-hmm. years prior, and I seen a I seen a clip, and they, everybody's just yelling at their chant. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm just in, in awe at, at the situation. So yeah. my first game is the same way. Every game was like that, so I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm gonna love it here. Yeah, you had me looking at the guys on the team going, man, yo, is this is this just because it's the first game of the year? <laughs> right, yeah, like, is this how it's going to be the rest <laughs> of the year? But, I, you know, it was it was cool at first. But I, was, I wasn't I was playing at first because I, I think 
I don't know what the situation was, but <clears throat> I think they were like, for new guys, they want you to, you know, work your way in. And, right. you know, I just ran, I just went with the flow. I just wanted to, I just wanted to be a part of everything. And, and, it, and, and going with the going with the flow, you still average twelve points a game, almost right. five assists. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it got better. Like I said, I, I I worked my way into what was going on, and the situation got a little better for me. That, I mean, that, yeah, but I, you're saying you work your way in. I'm looking at your numbers. I'm like, man, those ain't bad numbers are working. Imagine if they, if they didn't work you in. <laughs> those numbers might be like, <laughs> right. What, what was what was what was the best experience there? I mean, I, I mean, it's not it's not normal that someone comes over here to Europe and the first thing they do is play in the Euro League. It's right. not always. I mean, there's some teams that you know you get Zelgiris, Savannah Vezda is one of them that that bring these people over that these players over that are that just jump right into Euro League. But man, it's difficult because you've never played a European game and it's a whole different ball game here than mm-hmm. it is over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, for sure it was difficult. Um, like I, I got put in a great situation. Um, I feel like they 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 were missing a guy like me. They had everything that was. They had everything. They had Billy Barron at the time. Uh, I think mm-hmm. they just signed James Gist. Um, right. Ch- Charles Jenkins was a, a part of the team as well, and they had uh, Laza. Uh, he was team captain. Um, right. And. You know, I was just uh, another piece of the puzzle, and that that was that was Derek's second year, right? After Bayern, he was in Bayern first, right? In Germany, uh, and then the Vesda, was I can't remember. I, I thought he came through Germany first. Who's that? Or now, Derek Brown. Oh, Derek Brown. Uh, yeah, D. Brown was there too. I just talked to him the other day. Matter of fact, uh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I'm not oh, I sure. thought you said Derek before. I think uh, you said James. Derek I said, James. said James Gist. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. James. But yeah, D. Brown was there with us as well. But he right. was like on his last limb. Like he's like he's playing, but he's like, ah, maybe I should stop, you know. But I, I always heard he was that guy before he right. came to Red Star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he balled out in the beginning, man. He's he, he's been all over the place now. Yeah, yeah. He still got he still got game though. Yeah, I spoke <laughs> to him like two days ago, man. He was he's still doing well. After Red Star, you you picked up in Panathinaikos. They said they would offer you a contract. You were looking at Panathinaikos. You decided to go to Fenerbahce. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know Fenerbahce wasn't the best experience for you, yeah. so to speak, for what for whatever reasons there is. We'll talk about it in a second. But did you regret not going to Panathinaikos that year? Or you think you made the right move or the wrong move, or just you know, just what happened? Yeah, I think it was just what happened. Um, I would have enjoyed going to. Pal, but you know it. Something else led me towards to Fenner. Um, mm-hmm. um, like I, they had Jan Vesely, uh, Nando DiColo, who won't right. want to play with those guys. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Yeah. So that was plus a, coming off a couple championships, and I mean, yeah. They, but they did, they were going they they were going through that change of, of of leadership at the top, which is always a which is always a tough thing to go through once Selko left and, and Igor came in. Mm-hmm. But I think if I were you, that would have given me an idea like, okay, well, I, you know, I might as well get in with somebody new right? so I could step into a, a new role. But it didn't work out that way with, with, with right. Nando there and, and with Costas. What do, you think, what, what do you think was the difference? Why didn't you get that time that you, that you probably deserved, I should say? You know, I'm honestly not sure. Um, it, everything started off well you know it was a good flow um but i honestly couldn't tell you man it was it was a difficult time for me myself just because of you know uh, things going on back home but um right. it was you know it wasn't any bad blood between any of the players uh but it was just a lot of miscommunication um mm-hmm. i just felt like it wasn't clear for me to, you know, do it all, do play my game. I, I should say, uh, you you felt like you didn't know your role. Yes, the team. Ex- exactly. I really didn't know my role or what I should be doing out there. So, I mean, but it's you know, that awesome. that kind of interests me because when I when I sp- I did this crossover with Igor um, back, you know, just before he started, I think in the middle of the season, 
when y'all were playing. Was, there was a stretch where you guys were like really, I mean, it just went downhill for you guys at one point. But a lot of it had to do with injuries and everything else. But um, he, he seemed like such an incredible offensive mind mm -hmm. that that it always shocked me. Was like, man, there's got to be a way to get a guy like this into the game somehow yeah. and get into the flow of the game. You know what I mean? Especially if you have that kind of offensive thinking. For sure. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. But, it, it, you know, things didn't work out like that. Um, but, you know, like I said, this is still all love. Um, I'm still got lo love for those guys. Uh, Marco, Deshaun's still there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, play play against Vesley and Nando still. So, Marco, they, they they signed him during that year, right? Yes, he came. He came. That he year. came later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's been he's been playing ball lately too, man. He, hey, Marco he, is a bucket. He, he Marco's a bucket. He's a bucket. good <laughs> player. He works hard. He works hard too. So I I, I, could, I respect that about him. Right. Yeah. And and so how was that for you mentally, like? I mean, at this point, I'm thinking of myself as an ex-player. I'm thinking, okay, I'm here. I'm in this team. It's a big club. I'm playing the Euro League. The only thing I need to do is worry about how I'm going to get a job next year because mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. You're right. right. So you know, I mean, it was it was it wasn't as tough as I thought it would be because I've been through it already. Um, right. I, I've been through the fire, so. Whatever was going to be brought my way, I was going to roll with the punches and, and knock down a wall if I had to. Mm -hmm. But I mean, but you got to go home with yourself every day too and think about, man, you know, I'm missing opportunities here. I'm, you know, I wish I wish I had this. I wish I had that. You go on the road, you take these long road trips, and you don't play as much as you want to play. It's, right. That just that kind of gets frustrating after a while. For for it doesn't get frustrating for someone who doesn't feel like they should be playing. Mm -hmm. But I feel like since I feel like since you left North Carolina State, you you felt like you should have been playing no matter where you went. <laughs> no, for sure, yeah. <laughs> but you know, you know, and then it was it was like post COVID year too. So it was like you're in the house. You got you have to be in the house. We had like curfew right. and things going on. Yeah. So that's what it kind of made it even more frustrating because you have to sit down and like think about what to do. You know, the next day. So, but. Like I said, I like I've, I've been I've been through it all, so I was prepared. I was just like, okay, this is what's going on. How can I make it better, or how the, how can I do something to help someone else out? You know. So, and I'm already a quiet you, guy, so I don't really. You, you've actually had, if you think about it, you've actually had some bad luck in Europe too, considering COVID. <laughs> yes, yes, for I mean, sure. It's it's kind of like all right. You sign three nice deals with three big teams, and or, or you know four four big teams, and and three of them have been like just something's happened along the way to not give you any time. Because I was kind of making fun of you in the beginning, going like fourteen teams in ten years, but when you actually look at it, you're like it kind of all makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, so so it's like I mean, have you really have you thought about that? It's like, man, this has been shitty luck for me. I've I yes. went through COVID. I'm going, you know, now we're gonna get into Unix again the next time. But I mean, it's crazy, man. But I, are you expecting something to happen this year? Don't <laughs> I hope not. But. Right, right. No, I, I always pray that nothing happens. You know, so I'm just <laughs> I got my fingers crossed. But yeah, it's been yeah. weird. It's actually been so weird, man. Like you said, the Red Star situation. Uh, was on a on a, a team that we could have actually probably made the playoffs. We could have played more games, yeah. um, but COVID. Y'all were there. Y'all were there. Yeah, were there at the, we were know, there. The yeah, play. yeah. So COVID happened, ended the season, and then Fenner thing happened. It was a little weird, but for my situation. But like you said, uh, the next year. It was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but hey, before we get into that box, I want to get into that a little bit because I, I want to know what it was like. I talked to a bunch of different players, you know, mm -hmm. like Shingalia and and guys who played in you know Cheska and all that. And I got a little bit of their their insight, but I want to know when you went back to the Unix Kassan, Did anybody give you any 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 excuses about what happened years ago? You no, know, nobody said anything. I don't even. I don't really? know if they remember <laughs> that I came for a second. Like when I when I first <laughs> when I first got there. To, Nobody said anything like, hey, nice to see you again or something like that, you know, but yeah, it was, it was, it, that, was, it wasn't strange. I mean, no, but. 
nobody said like, hey, remember when you were here like four years ago and, right. and, no. and, and, and you didn't pass that test? Nobody, it was like, just like, don't talk about it. Right, it just swept under the rug. It was just like, okay, yeah. <laughs> you're here now, don't worry about it. Uh, oh, you had uh, Parasovitz. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I had I had that brain stalled too, man. Yeah. I, I just just remember that. <laughs> yeah. And and he's he's that that was what I wanted to bring. He's a great coach for point guards. Mm -hmm. I mean, he loves to get point guards involved in the game. So playing with him was was, I mean, it wasn't until this year, it's one of your best years of your career for sure. But yeah. what what was it that he did for you that other coaches hadn't done yet, especially the year before in Fenerbahce? You know, honestly, it was just put the ball in my hands and let me be myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I had a great surrounding cast, man. Uh, those guys on my team were like no other. Uh, and then it was like they were trying to prove themselves as well, which was right. John, John Brown, Isaiah Cannon, uh, Mario Hizonia, Tony Jakiri. So those guys were trying to prove themselves as well. So we kind of had like a chip on our shoulders. Yeah, it was, that's a bunch. That's a bunch of hungry guys right there. Exactly, you know. So it was it was fun just to play with those guys and <clears throat> excuse me, and you know, be be who we are on the court. Uh, and and, and that, let's go back to the bad luck again. Then a, a war breaks out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, when when in your wildest dreams do you think you'd be somewhere and a war would break out around you? Right, and then you're a million miles away from home, so it's like. Hey. What what are you going to do? You know, you just up and leave just because you just because this is going on and like you hear the embassy saying this and that. But then again, you have basketball games and right. you're under contract and you potentially could get sued for leaving or something like that. Like, you know, yeah. you don't know what is going on, but, you know, it was a crazy situation. I mean, the people, the people in the city were cool. I don't think they were mm -hmm. they didn't want any parts of what was going on. I don't know. Right. Yeah. So that kind of made it a little better because you were, you felt safe at the time, but you still didn't know what could go, go on. And uh, how, how were you? Are, we, are you living alone at this time? You live? Uh, yes, I was there. My, my, my girlfriend just left probably like maybe a few weeks before. So she just missed everything. Well, I mean, you you were probably happy about that, right? Because she's not there with you for that, but she's right. got to be terrified. Everybody was. Everybody in my family was just terrified. They were calling my phone, texting me like, you see what's going on on the news? Because, you know, uh, I'm just like, yeah, I see it. So trying to figure out what's next now. What are we, what are we going to do? What, what's what's going on? And what what was what were the, the, the next steps? What happened? I mean, did the team bring you in? They call mm -hmm. you in? They, I mean, you guys were expelled from EuroLeague, obviously, so that didn't. Right. That that wasn't an issue anymore, but what happened after that? Yeah, so it so we we had a game in Milan. The I guess we had a game in Milan. Like the the next like the next day, we heard about the war, and at this time, the league didn't like. I guess they didn't stamp that it was canceled yet. Right. So it was like. Like a seesaw kind of will kind of like so should we go to Milan and you know because we were gonna leave from Russia that day like the American guys let's get the foreigners we we're gonna leave right. and go home so they were like nah uh, you should fly on this trip with us to Milan and if they say that the game is canceled you can just go home from there and we were like okay that sounds like a a better idea just to you know. Just to get out. Yeah, just to get out. And then you, <laughs> you're in Milan, too. So you're like, you can just fly home from there. So we ended up getting on the plane. Uh, we ended up stopping. We get, we got stopped in the air in the middle of nowhere. nowhere in Russia, in the middle of nowhere at some random airport. And we're sitting down there. I guess we're trying to go to, we're trying to get to Turkey. It connect right. to the, yeah. So right. we're in the middle of nowhere just sitting down for like, four hours on the plane and they're trying to figure out like and trying to figure out can we get to Turkey or not and then they like they're like nah you can't you can't fly over there like it's 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 dead right now you can't go you can't go there so we ended up having to get off the plane and we had to wait another five hours off the plane to get back to 
Kazan. And we and at the time we had to reschedule our flights to get back home because we had scheduled flights from Milan to America. So we had to Oh, you had already you had already scheduled. Yeah, we had too. we had we had them booked out. Everybody had their flights booked. So we had to reschedule uh, our flights from Unix from from Kazan back to America. So it was it was nuts that day. It was crazy. How how, how did y'all get back to Kazan? Did you were you able to fly back or did you have the bus back? Uh we flew back. Yeah, we we had we oh, had to fly back. back, yeah. But luckily we Damn. flew back. Yeah, it was crazy. It was freezing cold, you know, like we were sitting on a plane for like four hours. Then we got off the plane and sat there for another four or five hours trying to figure out how to get back to Kazan because they were still trying to go to Turkey still. They were trying to get back, to, get to Turkey to play the game. But at the uh, same time, trying to figure out how to get back to Kazan. So it was just chaos. I'm like, oh my, like what is going on? I I can just I can just hear the conversation between y'all in, in oh, the plane man. in the airport, man. Just <laughs> everybody was so frustrated. Everybody was just ready to leave and get it over with. So the team the team eventually let you leave. Yeah, they did. They ended up letting us leave, and you know it was it was all good. But you ready. you went but you went back and finished. Yes. Because how I, many games did you how many games did you play after that? Uh, I just played. I finished played the playoffs. So it was maybe like uh, six or seven games. We, we, I mean, we, I would have never went back. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to go back neither, but it, it was, it was guys who actually stayed like Mario stayed and Tony stayed and I was checking in with them. I'm like, is it, is it safe? You know, like, is yeah. everything good? And they're like, yeah, like it's, you know, it's no problem over here where we are or anything like that. So like I said, I think the people in the city are more calm than anything they don't, they don't i don't think nobody in russia wants the war like i feel that's what i honestly feel but yeah. it's just it's it's over their head type deal yeah of course i mean i, I think i think everybody feels that way yeah you know? at least yeah, everybody sure. thinks that way yeah. <laughs> all right now let's finish this up a little bit but i gotta get into man i gotta get into you being a spanish citizen dude yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, and and I, and I read up on it because you know I always do my research, I do my work, I will make sure that I, I'm, I, you know, I got everything straight there. And and you played for Parasimic, which I should have remembered because I remember reading somewhere where he was going to bring in the Croatian team. Mm -hmm. Right? Is, is that am I accurate on that? Yeah, they were trying. They were trying and, for sure. And then you went to the Spanish team because of your relationship with Sergio mm -hmm. with Scariolo. Yes. How, how'd you get a passport? <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm I'm still kind of confused about that as well. But you know, it was a situation of a lifetime for me, man. Um, uh -huh. Like I like I, you know, you grow up watching the Olympics and seeing, you know, you seeing guys who play in those games. So I got a call one day when I was in my apartment in Russia, and it was my agent. He was saying that you might can potentially become a Spanish citizen. And I'm like, like what? You know, like how? And he, he broke it down to me. And I'm like, okay, I'm, that sounds, that sounds amazing. Like I, that's a, you know, I, I couldn't never, after the stuff I've been through, I'm like, I, I, I'm with this. This is, this sounds great. Maybe, maybe the Olympics, you know, like who knows, but, you know? So, and I'm looking at it as like great basketball players on the team already and who's been there before me. So I done done some research already. So I'm like, yeah, this is, this is this is this is crazy right here. So yes, it's a, it's a yes for me. But how long did that take? How long? What long process? Um, that? So I got the call maybe, maybe in like January, December ish, and this summer it this summer it happened. Okay, so the, the, the January December before before this summer. Yes. Yeah. Not like a, okay. Yeah. Damn, that's cool. That's so quick, man. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. And 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 how often did you practice with these guys beforehand? I'm, I'm, I mean, you fit it. You, you you have the luxury, you know. And I, I'm saying this in in a, in a good way, not a sarcastic way. But you have the luxury of of having the the ability to fit into teams quickly because you've been on so many teams. Right, over right. Last, <laughs> you know, I mean, but but getting to know you. Because right, I, I know there's some players that like to be, you know, move from place to place and, and whatever. But getting to know you here to this interview, my my feeling is that 
you really want to be in one place. You'd really, you'd rather just be settled down and like put your feet down, put your bags down, unpack yeah. your bags, like we yeah. said, Kick and just be comfortable up. for a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but no, yeah. I only practice. I, I like I practice. We practice maybe ten times. Uh-huh. Good, like good practices, like you know, like those hard practices, maybe like ten times, and that was it. Damn. I remember watching y'all play the the I think it was Lithuania, but I think that was the overtime game, wasn't it? Really, y'all were down by twenty something. Uh huh. Y'all were down by twenty the whole damn tournament to begin with. <laughs> it took a while, time, man. It took a while for us to get it, every get time it going. I, every time I turned around, I was like, "Damn, they lose it by twenty again. They're going to win by three. You're right. Uh, but Lithuania took you guys to to overtime, and you went crazy in that game, man. What I mean. It, it seemed to me that was the one game where where you, not only were you confident, you had the, the players' confidence with you. Because it's got to be an uncomfortable situation for you, too. The press was talking about, mm-hmm. you know, what's he doing here? There's a lot of I, – I know players can block out the press of them. You can't block it all out. Right. You know, so so was that game, like, the key game to, to, to like, you know, kind of, like, say – Okay, right. right. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just gonna do my job and not listen to, the, to all the noise. Yeah, I mean, I like, I, I never really listen to like what's going on because that could hurt you mentally, you know. And right. I'm not, I'm not the guy who wants to be getting into my own head because I would just veer off, you know. I'm not, I don't want to do that. So I try to stay out of the tabloids as much as possible. But uh, yeah, you, like you know, you know that about yourself, then right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I under I understand myself, so yeah, right. I, I, that's a good that's, the, that's a good part. But um, yeah, that 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 that's that's solving the problem. That's how that's it, having a solution before the problem gets yeah, there. Exactly for <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, yeah, but that game was it was definitely important for me. Um, it played a big part in how we finished because I got to be myself and the guys got to see me be myself and. Like you said, it, it got everyone got comfortable with how the game was going, right? And you know, it worked out for the best. What what it what it feel to win that goal, man? What it feel like? I couldn't I couldn't believe it. Honestly, it was it was a feeling like no other because it was at the end they had the confetti coming down, and I'm just looking like like is it over? That's your, that's your first championship, right? It's my it's... first championship. Yes, right. I made it to the finals in the G League. The, the year I got the MVP, but we lost. But that was actually this was actually the first championship I ever ever got. Right. Yeah, it was crazy. The curiosity gets me on one thing, man. It's like because you're not Spanish, although you have a passport. <laughs> is is the is the feeling? Because it's not like winning a European championship when you're playing for you know Maccabi or you're playing for whoever. Is the feeling more of a like? Like just a regular championship, but like you never won one before, so you didn't really know what it was like, anyways. But right. do you get a better? Did you get a better feeling from the Spanish guys? More of a you know a patriotic feeling from them that that they just felt like man, they just won this for the country, and and right. you don't have that same feeling yet because you're not you 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 never really lived here, lived the life. But did you seeing them celebrate that make you feel that much better? Especially, especially since you say you're a guy that likes to dish yeah. and make everybody else happy. Yeah, man, and then just. Realizing how long that they've been playing together, they right. showed they showed me a picture and it was like all of them. They were sitting down on the bus and they were like twelve, and I'm like, y'all been playing <laughs> with each other this long? And they're like, yeah, like we've been, you know, we've been at this for you know plus amount of years. And I'm like, okay, this is this really this is really like this is really it for y'all. Then like y'all want this this bad, so it took me a while to just click in and and grasp what what they were feeling and. You know, who, who who's the, who's the guy that kind of took you under the wing and kind of like like helped you out the most and and, and made you feel most comfortable? Willie, Willie, for sure. yeah, Willie for uh-huh. sure, yeah, and uh, Rudy, Rudy. But that that, that I'm talking I'm talking about on the court, not off the court, man. Nah, both, yeah. <laughs> and, and we went with everybody, man. Uh, Sergio, Sergio, Rudy, Willie. Uh-huh. All the guys, man. All the guys were. So you talk. You, you you you're talking to me about all the guys that go out at night and hang out, man. Nah, nah, nah. I don't know. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah. No, those so, guys. They played a big part, man. It was good. Good guys for sure. So 
why you, you after that you signed for Maccabi. Why would you come to a Spanish team? I don't I didn't nobody was like looking for me, I guess. I guess I think Really? Yeah, I think everybody had their, their roster set for the most part. Oh, okay. So and then uh I think Yeah, we, well it was late, that's true. Yeah. Right, yeah, I mean, it was a little late, so it was just it was just that, I guess, yeah. Well, you you feel like you find a home. I mean, you're balling. You, I mean, you're balling in Maccabi. But you're, you're having a great year. You and you and uh, uh, Wayne. <laughs> it's just is the numbers y'all are putting up together is just sick. It's it's, yeah. it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. But th- the most important thing I think is I, I want to ask this question. You feel like you found a home that you signed another extension of your contracts. You got three years there, right? Yeah, sure. And and I've and I've always called Tel Aviv like the L.A. of of Europe. Amazing. And I love I, I love that city. Amazing here. <laughs> it's amazing here. So so with this three year deal, you in you in for good for because you know there's rumors going around here in Spain that you might be coming this way. Ah uh, no nah, yeah you got to shut those rumors down right now yeah I, <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm stuck right now for sure. <laughs> You, but but you want to be stuck, don't you? Yes, yes, man. It's been a long time coming. Like it's like a, I can just like release some pressure off my back a little bit, and you know, just play basketball. Yeah, the, the best I felt when I played out here was when I was able to. And this, a lot of people don't get this if they've never been through it. The best I felt when I played out here was when I was able to to pack up my summer clothes. Mm-hmm. And go back to the states for a couple of months and leave all my clothes here in the house that I was going to come back to. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I can't. Wait. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait for that. Yeah, that's that's my dream right there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like an underestimated thing that no one ever really realizes, man. Because we're so used to bringing like fifteen bags or eight right. bags, depending on how much family you got, whatever. And it's like, man, just to be able to just take one bag with me back to the states for a couple of months and leave everything back in 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 Spain was was just an amazing relief more than anything else. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I can't I can't wait for that. You know, I, you know, like you said, like it's been a long time coming for me, man. I, I'm more than happy to be here. Is your girl your girl living with you out in, in Tel Aviv? Yeah, yeah, she's here with me as well. You know, she's, yeah, at, the, she's, she's at the beach all day. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, she's smart. She's sitting on the beach all day long. Right, there you go. Yeah, the weather is, it's, weather is amazing. The people out here just accepting, they accept you for, you know, what's going on. So, right. you can't ask nothing. And, and, man, and I'll tell you what, we talk, I talked about this with the referee the other day, Luigi LaMonica, man. It's, is some of the best fans in Europe, not mm-hmm. only because of the not only because of the atmosphere, but but they combine the atmosphere with knowledge of the game. And like right. I played game I played games there years ago, man, and dropped like thirty something in the game and, and they actually uh, like cheered yeah. for me after the game. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, right. That you happened know, to me last like, year. That's funny. <laughs> oh, you went you went yeah, and that, out on them last year. Happened and, to me and, last and, year. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, you know, like, good man. job. They're like, good job. I'm like, I'm like, are you serious right now? They're like, yeah. They're like, good job. A great game. Hope to see yeah, you next they'll, year. They'll yell at you for 40 minutes, but when in the game, they're just like, all right, man. You right. got us. <laughs> you, don't see, you don't see that anywhere else. Like, anywhere else, they're going to throw, uh, throw something after you have a good game. Anywhere else. Yeah, in, in Kaunas, in Zalgiris, you might see that also. Yes. Yeah, okay, Zalgiris you know, too. Yeah, that's a great Yeah, they're, 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 those are the two uh, the two, the two, two arenas, I think, that are most knowledgeable of the game and, the, and that respect the game. Although, you know, mm-hmm. you'll always get a couple people here and there that, that, that <laughs> have that, that little little too much testosterone, we'll yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> a little pissed after the game, but no, for sure. It happened uh, to me last year. It, it, was, it was actually cool that it happened to an all real – we were walking out. They were like, "Yeah, good job, good job." We're looking like what? Like, okay, he's, he, he's like he he's messing with me. Yeah, he? yeah, he got to be. He, he got to be playing. He, he, he wants me to come slap him five so he can do something. <laughs> <laughs> that kids do that now. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, but 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 now I got to tell you when when a ball player goes there and you and you lose a game and they balled out and your fans give him give him a, give him a little ovation you're going to be pissed off too no 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 I, won't. <laughs> I, I accept it what it is man like like I said I have I have a lot of friends in this league and um you know it's it's, it's cool to see everybody doing their thing right now so yeah, it's, it is good. It's nice to it's it's nice. Like I say, when, when we were talking before, you you lose so many people along the way because of whatever circumstances, mm-hmm. whether you know, 
they get burnt out. There's drugs. They go the wrong way or whatever. But when you see people start to make it, it's, it's yes, it's, man. Hey, 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 you know how many people saying that about you right now? Everything <laughs> you've been through, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, and that's that's a, that's a good thing, man. I lo- I love to hear it, and I, and it's nothing. It's nothing better than having your peers speak up speak up for you too. So, uh, I think that's a plus. yeah, that's I mean. And that, that's what you look for in life. You look for mm-hmm. make sure you the people that the people that you compete against on a daily basis have that respect for you. Exactly. We go we go see how much how much respect they have for you after I get done with this yearly test yeah. that you gotta do before we leave. Oh man. Lord, okay, okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's bring it on. Let's see it. I, I told him I said, make it easy, man. I don't know if he's gonna be I don't know if he's gonna be all that, but Is it but, current but, is it current stuff or is it like history? Eh, it's mostly current. Okay. We try to keep we try to keep it current for you. It's Pablo you talked to before who did who, who, who <laughs> sends these tests out. He always gets mad at me when I mention his name, but it's like you know I don't want to get in trouble for for these tests. <laughs> I didn't write them up. Although I did change one of them today, I'll admit that. Otherwise, he'll be mad at me. Well, I'll see so, if I can pick that one up. So so let me see. I got test goes. Question number one's worth ten points. Two twenty, three thirty, four forty, five fifty. All right. So every everyone gets a little bit harder and they're worth more points. Okay. I'm gonna tell you. So far this season, I got our, our, our referee don't know much about European basketball. He only got, got 70 points last week, and I and I and I gave him 30. Uh, I gave, no, right. <laughs> I gave one. Well, uh, your ex coach or your actual present coach, I guess, Circus Scariolo, only got 60. 60. And, and, yeah, you only got 60 out of 100. But Dante Exum and Will Clymore right now are leading the season with 100. Whoa, okay. I All need right. that 100. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, so so you got two chances to get 100. You either get questions one through four to tie 100, or you get one, two, three, and five, and that'll give you 110. You'll be the, you'll be the leader for the season. Okay. Ready? All right, here we go. How many Serbian teams are playing this year in the EuroLeague? How many Serbian teams? Yeah. Uh, two. There you go, man. See? Look at it. I told you it was going to be easy to that. Yeah. Who are they? Uh, Partizan and Red <laughs> There you go. Good. Number two. Who's the oldest player participating in the EuroLeague this, year, this season? Oldest player? Yeah. Guy Panini? There you go, man. Look okay, at that. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how old is he? Uh, a guy is 37? 39. 39? 39. Okay. But we ain't going to take any points away. You don't worry okay, about okay, it. Okay, that, that, okay. That, that, yeah. You got the question right. You got the question right. Uh, damn, these are easy, man. Yeah. Which actual player from Partizan has played also for Savannah Vezda and Maccabi Tel Aviv like you? Oh, my gosh. I know. I know this name, too. <laughs> All right, you gotta, you gotta just tell me his name. Matias Lasort. Lasort. Yeah. I was gonna say, um, what's my other guy's name? Uh, the shooter, number twenty-one. We'll figure. We'll figure out. Yeah, we, we'll figure. We gotta go. It's actually two guys then, so yeah. So I should get half a point for that. James Nunnally. James Nunnally. That's his name. <laughs> yeah, there I could go. not think of his name. My but my I'm not gonna take credit for it. My boy just sent it to me. By oh okay, <laughs> yeah yeah that's his name, James Nelly. My bad, James. Uh, hold on, let me get question number four for it. Actually, question number three, right? No, number four, number four. Um, where is it? Which team this season has captured the most rebounds, both offensive and defense? So it's total rebounds for the season. What's the number one team in the league in the year league this season in rebounding total? Total rebounds. Is it Zagiers? God, that's a good that's a good answer, man. That's is a it, good answer because because they're so strong on the offensive. Is it board, offensive? Would, they all, they're like they're offensively. They they are winning. Yeah, but I would, I, that would have been my guess too. Real Madrid is actually Real the Madrid, leader. With, of course they are. Not, but, but look at but look at nine forty two followed by Elba with nine forty one. It's only oh, one wow. rebound that separates the two of them. Wow. And and Elba's another team that 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 strong rebounder. Yeah. 
I was going to ask you what both teams were, but I was like, man, after you got that last one wrong, I'm like, I'm going to be nice and just take another one too. <laughs> What if I know? Okay, you're right. Yeah, that's that's. All right, what do you got? Thirty points. This is your chance for eighty at least. At least you okay, can beat. Okay, come on, Brown. You got this. You, you can you can beat. You got to get this one to beat Coach, man, Coach Cariola. Yeah. Who is the fastest player to reach a thousand points in the yearly history since the year two thousand? Since the year two thousand? Oh wow. Since it's been the yearly, but supposedly to them it's the yearly, but it's always been the yearly for me. Shane Larkin? No. No, I, I was, I was going to try to give you a hint and tell you that it's, it's an award that you might want to win at the end of the season. It's the Alfonso Ford Award. Alfonso Ford is... is oh, the NBA, right, right, That's right. the award of the top scorer in the league. Yeah, he reached and it in 44 games. It was Alfonso Ford? Yeah, oh, Alfonso wow. Ford, yeah. Yeah, man. Man, yeah, it was I a great interview. You didn't, you, didn't do, you didn't do great on the test, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I tried though. It was a good try. Hey Zo, man, number one, I want to uh, thank you for the time that you've taken out with us and, and, and my listeners and everything else. But I've been looking forward to this uh, this interview. Been looking forward to get to know you a little bit more than what you know what I see on the on, on the Wikipedia and all that other stuff. You know, <laughs> right, right. so uh, I got to know you, man. I, I, I know your story. I think it's a great story. I think it, the, the fact that. You know, everything comes to people in due time when they deserve it. You might have had to fight a little bit more than, than most people have had to to get to where you are today. But congratulations, my man. You're there. I appreciate it. Man. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Good, good luck, man. I, 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 you, you guys are right at that. You guys are right at that traffic, that traffic jam in between seventh, right. eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. All right. Listen. Oh, I'll, hopefully, work. I'll see. Hopefully, I'll see you in Cowboys, man. Make, you know, make people. Surprise some people for me. For sure. Most definitely. <laughs> Have to. All right, my man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man, for your time. Thank you.